Hello, my name is Wade Numer, and this is Rotary serving our community. One of the big challenges Rotary's facing today is the, I would say, losing membership that we have. A lot of members here in North America are actually going away, and we've seen a considerable reduction on Rotary. And one of the big effects of that is that Rotary could do uh, a lot of good things if they had more members. It also affects uh, not only what we do, but also the finances that come forward for doing these grants. One of the successes that we've had and seen is in the 2016 Council on Legislation, there was an enactment that actually changed it to where clubs could be more flexible, changed the membership and the structure of these clubs. And one of the big successes that I've seen is the Rotary Club of Carpenter Morning. With me today, I have Kim Fly, the current president of the club. Kim, welcome. Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm from Carpinteria. I'm a real estate agent and property manager. Um, I like to hike all the time. I um, have a family. I have two boys, and they're in college. And yeah, great. So yeah. you have a little bit of time now that yeah. you're in college. Yeah, <laughs> good for you. How did you get into Rotary? Uh, my father was in Rotary in Raton, New Mexico. He was the president there in like 2008, and then my mother was the president of the Carpentry of Morning Rotary, and I ended up going to a meeting um, in about 2015, and she introduced me and said that I was joining the club. She didn't really <laughs> give me an option, she just said I was joining the club. So I was like, oh, I guess I have to now. Good, good. You've put me on the spot in front of this whole group of people. <laughs> Perfect, and hopefully you haven't regretted it. I haven't at all. It's actually helped me uh, like just grow as a person, professionally, um, intellectually, uh, and the world, just meeting so many different people. True, very true. Now, have you um, experienced what they say is a rotary moment, something that really touched you on how the organization has fit in your lifestyle? I guess, um, well, I've always had this kind of thing about immunizations, mm -hmm. uh, that I've always wanted kids to be immunized. And I was, um, I guess I kind of got fired up when I when I was with people who didn't understand that we would immunize people around the world. Okay, for, for polio? For polio, and I was just like, wait, what do you mean? Like, we have to, we have to keep doing it because if we don't do it, you know, so many children could be, you know, affected by True. diseases and polio being the major one that Rotary works mm -hmm. on. And your mother went to India actually on, on one of those trips, right? Yes. To immunize children. Uh, did she talk to you about it at all or? Yeah, her she her experience was um, millions of people. You know, it was kind of overwhelming the amount of people, and then I think that puts it in more perspective for me. Is that it's not just my community, my little community, or it's not just California, or it's not just the United States. We're talking millions of children mm -hmm. every year that That's need help. Very true, millions. Um, now Rotary is kind of focusing a new focus direction and that is based on service, serving others and doing projects worldwide. Have you seen that in your club as uh, one of the big benefits in bringing people in and having an impact in the community? Well, I, yeah, the, what I notice is that I think that um, when I look around the room of a r room of people I'm leading, and if people don't have something to do, that they're not serving in some way, they don't have a purpose. You know, I guess that's what you're going at. Mm -hmm. Like, I want, um, when I bring members in, I want them to all feel like they have a purpose. Right. You know, that Rotary gives them purpose. Right. So, you know, it ha overall it gives them purpose, but it also is like, individually they need to be participating. Mm -hmm. So I try to come up with projects or activities that they would have purpose. Very good. Now, you started your year, um, your presidential year, uh, with 38 members. Now you're up to 50. So yeah. what kind of uh, innovations have you kind of stirred? Because uh, most clubs are going the other direction, but you've uh, been extremely successful at attracting members, new members. Yeah, we have uh, two models in our club, basically. We have a regular long-term member, and then we have uh, a part-time member, someone who couldn't come to a club because they live far, far away or they um, have health issues and they can't be in at our club first thing in the morning every single day, or they have, um, uh, what else would it be like? They travel all the time for work. Mm -hmm. So they never thought they could be a part of a Rotary Club because they couldn't meet every week. Okay. So. You created the flexibility then to try and match people's lifestyles. Yes. Have you seen this as a benefit uh, for a lot of the members, the ones that are actually in that? Um, basically, a lot of them I've seen 
they probably wouldn't be in Rotary had it not been for the flexibility of your club. No, I, yeah, they're definitely new people are showing up and they're excited that they could be a Rotarian. Even, you know, interestingly enough, my son on the phone yesterday, who is in graduate school, he's like, I want to be a Rotarian. Wow. And he wants to join our club. That's outstanding. And because he feels that it, it gives him a level of professionalism as going into the world where he's going to have a career wow. that he, he loves Rotary, he loves what he's seen with his family, and he wants to be that. Good. Now, does he realize he'll be the first third generation member of our club? I don't know. I didn't even bring that up. <laughs> he, he would also something. be one of the youngest members, which is, so, yeah. you know, I always like, um, I always keep thinking that we don't necessarily need a Rotary Act. What we need is young people to join our club. Mm -hmm. uh, the chapter type of membership, which is a lower fee kind of membership, is kind of good for people like mm -hmm. that that are traveling and working and building a career, but they still want to be a part of a great organization. Great. Uh, you talked about or mentioned chapter clubs. Now, that chapter club actually, um, I believe, our club is the only one that has a chapter club itself. And the one area where we are active is in the area of Guatemala, we actually right. have this. So tell us a little bit about that club. Well, we have um, people in a chapter club mm -hmm. in Guatemala. We have nine or 10 okay. uh, members. They meet weekly, uh, just like us in the morning. Uh, they meet, uh, for our time it would be 6 a.m. and on Friday, <laughs> uh, normally they're 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. And they are on, they do huge projects in Guatemala, and that is actually part of our club. And then we try to do projects together. So, um, does that make sense? It does. No, okay. it, makes, it makes good sense. So they have like a sort of like a leader in different roles and positions of what they do. And then they have projects that they're trying to work on. Like one is eyeglasses. They've gotten uh, something like 45,000 pairs wow. of eyeglasses wow. uh, and 19,000 prescription glasses for <laughs> children that they've generated, um, lots of different health things that they're working on. So if I can get a um, kind of a feel of it, it's actually a club in a club then, so it'd be like a sub-club uh, that meets underneath the umbrella of uh, Carpenter Morning then. Yes, it is. Okay. But they do consider me to be their leader of their club. You are the so, yeah, you know, the So they the kind of check with me on things, whether they would you know, we could work together mm -hmm. on something or, you know, want feedback or so, being a part of it. So do they have their own leader then? Do they have a, like a, a chapter leader or president? Yeah, like they do. Okay. Yeah. And do they rotate or alternate yearly or is that? I believe they do. Okay. You know, I'm just, so. this is my first year, so I'm <laughs> trying to figure that out. And, you know, we should all rotate yearly. Exactly. So, and there's really great leadership there, so. you know, some really great you know, members of their club. Now, one of the um, requirements that Rotary has is that even if it's a satellite club or in this case, a chapter club, that they still stay in communication with the, the main club itself. How do, how do they do that? Well, we get weekly emails from them. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, also have phone calls. I have had phone calls with them and mm -hmm. I have, I work with a couple of the club members through WhatsApp Okay. And through uh, Messenger, and then also through Zoom. That's how we have a meeting. Mm -hmm. So um, anytime they have a meeting, because they have people in their club that are in different parts of Guatemala, so they're not That's all true. in the same yeah. room. So they'll have a Zoom meeting, and I can be invited to that, and other members from Carpinteria here can be invited to it. So, and so we have a great meeting together. Sounds good. So I did notice um, on the Zoom meetings that they actually have those things where anybody can enter in or participate at that time. Yes. So, and it's weekly. Uh, yes. Like you say, they meet every, every Friday. Friday. Um, one of the big meetings I noticed they had, had actually uh, the General Secretary, John Hugo. Yep. John I was attended telling that me about one. that one. I did also. And John was uh, pretty uh, excited about that opportunity to that one. So that, I think, in itself lends itself to the new structures that we're going to in Rotary. You, you brought some pictures, by the way. We have, I think, about six or seven pictures. Okay. If you want, we could jump into those right now and show the audience. Yeah, we can jump in together. Yeah, that sounds good. So the first picture you have actually is, is a group picture of, of them um, getting together, I think, right before a hike. Uh, was it the hike for polio? Oh, yes. So we did, um, for our club, we did the hike to end polio. Okay. And that was a 30-day challenge in September. Okay. And part way through in September and then ended right before 
uh, World Polio Day. Okay. I wanted to make sure that we got money in okay. right before World Polio Day. <laughs> and this Day. group here is a picture, that's a picture of the team from Guatemala? Yes, and they did is they took a group of children out and did bird watching for their hike to end polio. Oh, nice. And nice. then they all contributed to our whole collective donation wow. to Rotary International. Well, that's outstanding. That's yeah. a great one. You also have locally a few pictures here that were done. Uh, one picture showing this is our team here, right? Yep, Doing this is hike. part of our team, yep. We had um, many members from our club, plus people from outside our club, actually another two other clubs in the area, mm -hmm. one from uh, Rotary Club of Santa Barbara and then uh, Rotary Club of Carpinteria, just okay. the, the midday one. And I believe that was on Franklin Trail, right? Yep. So you guys did that one. So how far did you guys end up going up, up the hill? On that day, just four miles. Okay. But we um, just four. You must we be a hiked hiker. over thirty days, <laughs> doing okay. many, many, many hikes, wow. and then we raised over five thousand dollars. That's that's outstanding. That is a good one. So it looks like participation was actually quite quite good at that. Yes. Now we have a picture next showing um, actually one of the meetings, one of the uh, televised meetings. This came from Zoom. So um, tell us a little bit about that. Is it done in English or is that done in Spanish? Well, that Is was the interesting next? thing. When I first, I got really nervous the first time <laughs> that I was going to have to go and be in this room, sort of, mm -hmm. with these people that only spoke Spanish because I don't speak Spanish very well. I mean, I can understand mm -hmm. some of it. <laughs> and so what happened, though, is I, you know, clicked in and I'm in this meeting and they are so incredible. They did the whole thing in English well, for that me. That for you. Oh, yeah. That was nice. That and was nice. then... There are some people in their club that didn't speak English, but then they would translate for each oh, other. That was nice. Because I do re recall about 50% of those members actually speak English. They're bilingual. Oh, and beautifully bilingual, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's true. And some of them actually still live in the U.S. and run back and forth. Mm -hmm. So that is outstanding. Um, another picture we have here is a logo picture. Uh, I believe this is of a brick. Is yes. that correct? Yes. This is, um, this is the logo of our... Guatemala chapter. Nice. And then it's going to be installed at our park here in Carpinteria. Sounds, um, sounds good. At the Tomo Park. So Tomo is that actually Carp is that actually available right now? Uh, you guys have it in hand? Yes. Okay. Sitting on my desk. Perfect. Uh, I th believe in another week we have an install, so we can maybe do that one too. Yes. Great. Good for you. And that was done in uh, recognition for the Guatemala Club. Yes, it is. Uh, outstanding. Um, next up we have, let's see, uh, a meeting, another meeting, I don't know which meeting this one is from, but this is their group, I guess? That's their group. Okay. And I think it very, might very have been formal. a year. Yes. But they are much more formal than us. That's okay. what we had also discovered. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they, they, you know, our Carpinteria Club, people come in in all sorts of this things that they true. would wear. Because we're more casual. We're Carpinteria Well, casual. and they're also, we're from all different types of careers. Sure, yeah. And so p some people have come in and they might actually be retired and don't need to come <laughs> in in a suit or dress or true. something. Very true. And then um, another picture we have next is a picture of a project site, I believe. So this is what they're doing right now currently? Yes, this is one of their projects. Um, they've uh, become one of the it's our club and them, all of mm -hmm. us together. Um, mm -hmm. It's the Save Me B project. Mm -hmm. And what they're working on is to prevent bees from getting endangered. So they're doing education in farming, in schools, uh, about bees and what pesticides can do to bees okay. or um, how, you know, and that translates kind of all over for it's everywhere in the world, but this is a big, maybe it's like new information for mm -hmm. Guatemalan farmers. Right. I don't know. Right. Actually, this gained uh, international recognition. Yes. Um, our club was one of the first to actually implement this, and so uh, they became an example. When I say they, that's both of the clubs. Right. The home club and also the, the club in Guatemala. So, uh, and that club, or that project, I believe, was started in Chile, correct? I am not sure, actually. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Save the Bees, actually, I think was started with a Chile uh, chapter that we had at one time with five members there. Okay. And then they had shared it, Guatemala took it over then, and have become very successful with that. So uh, again, good things that they're doing. So tell me this, how um, interesting is it to actually have an international club in a club? Have you ever thought about that? 
Well, I have. I, not necessarily interesting. I think it's, it brings a broader perspective, you know, that we're part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. It, and it makes us not just think about our town. It, we have to think bigger. Very good. So a club that thinks bigger, that's kind of fascinating. Um, in the past, only the e-clubs then had international um, footprints, but the e-clubs, one thing they lacked was the community connection, which we have both now. So right. you're seeing that as being one of the big benefits. So tell me this, um, how about the rest of the members? Uh, when you look at the members, in our, we have the local members and then we have the international members. How do you keep them tied together to keep that unity as a club? Well. I include them in the communication, the mm -hmm. weekly communication. We also use social media. We have a Facebook account, and most of the people in our club are in our mm -hmm. kind of groups on that, so they get cool. to see the projects that we've been working on nice. um, and also feel included mm -hmm. and be invited places. And uh, locally, even at the, well, at the local level, you've had extremely good success bringing people into our club itself, the Carpenter Morning Club, the one that's local. Mm -hmm. um, what do you attribute that to? Well, so when I first came into Rotary, it was, um, I remember being um, kind of upset that they wanted me to be, I couldn't be a realtor, uh, even though I was paying huge hmm. amount of dues every year to be a realtor. Hmm. It was like you had to have a badge and that had to have like a different Your classification. classification. Right. Got it. And I was like, well, how can they, like, how, what does that mean? Why would you ever yeah. limit people or put a label on something? Mm -hmm. You know, I, maybe there's so, I actually don't know why they did it. The, <laughs> you know, why was this thing in the past that they yeah. would do that? And when I think that loosened up when they stopped doing that, um, it brought this whole other view for me was that uh, Rotary is for anyone who wants to be a Rotarian. That we have people from all walks of life. You don't have to be um, a business owner. Like a lot of people said, well, I'm not, I don't want to be a Rotarian because I'm not a business owner. Well, it don't have to be a business owner to be a Rotarian. You could be a clerk. You could be a yeah. whatever yeah. it is that you are, you know. It's if you want to be a Rotarian and you want to make a difference in the world, come be a Rotarian and make a difference in the world. That's good. And so I invite a lot of people to come to our meetings. Just, oh, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not a Rotarian. You know, I, I could never be a Rotarian. Well, why not? You yeah. know, because, yeah. you know, I'm not in that field or I'm not, you know, in the... Mm -hmm. I, they had a lot of ideas out there that aren't true about Rotary. And so I just keep inviting people and having them show up and having each one of value. And that, Good. and also like not having um, judgment about people. There's, um, cause we never know who's gonna show up and do something outrageous in our club, <laughs> right? That's it, true. It, it, you don't know what someone's capable of right. when you've right. given them an opportunity to be, make a difference or be a leader or, or show up. So give me an example, you don't have to name names, uh, of somebody that is new into the club and what you've seen they've, they've liked, what they've appreciated about the organization of being Rotary itself, if you could think of one. So for example, I know you had a few people that have considered it or thought about it, but they never actually joined, uh, joined the organization just because they felt like an outsider. So part of it is the inclusiveness, being, being able to feel inclusive. How did you uh, accomplish that? Well, there was one, um person that came to our club that didn't want to be a leader. She was right offhand, just said, I don't want to be a leader. Okay. But she is a helper and she declares being a helper and we need helpers. Sure. Is that what you mean? That is, that yeah. is. Yeah, exactly. So you, you never know who's going to show up and what they can, can contribute. Mm -hmm. um, we had another woman that showed up, um, had transferred at one point from another club or she was in another club, right. left that club, but missed being in Rotary. She's someone that says yes almost every single time mm -hmm. to something. When she's asked to do, you know, could you help with a project or are you available this weekend to do something? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and wow, that's nice. That's refreshing <laughs> to have someone just say yes, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely so. And I know you're extremely active. The club itself does uh, a lot of good things community-wise and internationally. What are some of the... I would say focus events that you do as a club 
that attracts members or gets them engaged? Because I know you do, for example, the, well, you sell a calendar. We do a casino night. We do a number of other things. Well, we're doing a work day a coming work up day? soon yeah. for uh, Tomal Park. We're also doing um, part of uh, Group 8. We're going to do a food packaging event oh, with nice. uh, Rise Against Hunger. Mm -hmm. um, we did the hike for polio. We got as many people as we could on that one. Uh, yeah, so those are extremely yeah, just some. Diverse. Those are just yeah, some yeah. recent. Exactly, ones. and they're all different. They're all different. They're all different. So, um, have you seen different people doing different events? So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. And they can pick and choose. It's they, up to them. They can pick and choose. And how do you find the leaders of each of these events or projects? Volunteer? They raise their hand for you. Or? They do raise their hand, good. but I also see that leadership is something that. Even though people volunteer, someone might volunteer as the leader. Usually, the true leader will rise to the top. True. In some cases, it won't necessarily be the one who signed up to be the leader. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of I don't l try to uh, say who's the leader. Yeah. Okay. Because I really like to see who's the one that actually wants to be the the, the, the person the that does a bunch that. on the project. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Um, one of the other challenges that Rotary I've seen is that people will come to Rotary, they join Rotary, and there's no problem with people coming in, but how do you keep them? What's the retention factor? Do you know how that works out? Because I know you've had, I don't think there's anybody that's left the club since you become president. Well, for me, um, I want to make sure that my meetings are entertaining. Okay. I want to make sure that people feel acknowledged in my club for the contributions that they're giving of themselves. Okay. Um, so I do that with I have some funny little awards that I do <laughs> that's going on. I do that um, with staying in communication with them, telling them they've done a great job, um, making my meetings fun by making people stand up or sit down or do things that they have to move <laughs> around a bit, mm -hmm. um, offer new speakers or little speak, you know, little moments of a speaker where you might come up to the front of the room and only speak for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make things diverse and changing all the time. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That is that is interesting. It, very interesting way to look at it. Um, attracting different age demographics. Have you taken a look at that? Is there a game plan or are you just kind of going on who people invite in? Well. Because, you, you know, it seems to be that people come in in groups. And uh, I've seen the same success that we've had where they come in in groups, for example, one of the chapter clubs came in from Chile, another one came in from Guatemala. The current group has come in, has been, seems like friends before they were members of the club. Well, a lot of those women came in <coughs> with our previous president, past mm -hmm. president, Renee, mm -hmm. and those were a lot of her friends, and they were my friends too, mm -hmm. but there was, um, I think all, we actually received a lot of those members by inviting them to social events. There you go. So that seems to be so it, we uh, before we they were even thought of of being a potential member they were coming to our Christmas parties they were coming to our fundraisers they were you know we included them on going to a Dodger game mm -hmm. you know that was a right. Rotary Dodger game right. and so uh, they felt really part of the group before they were even part of the group okay now you've been active um, extremely active probably because your mother doing international things like going to the convention. Uh, traveling to different project sites, things like that. How much of a importance do you think it is to actually understand the internationality of Rotary for a club? Well, I think it's great if you have the opportunity. It's mm -hmm. not. Uh, it's not for everyone. Not everyone can afford it mm -hmm. to travel. Uh, you know, even wanting to get um, our Guatemalan members up here, it was difficult. Then it mm -hmm. might be from visas or financial and. Um, so it's important, but it's also, it's nice to bring it into the club, bring a story into the club. Um, you know, a, a trip that you've taken, bring it back to the club. Um, it makes a huge difference. And also inviting other Rotarians from other clubs who have gone on international projects to come talk to us, right? So what you're saying is you offer opportunities. They, they yes. get to see what it's like and get an understanding. Because I notice a lot of clubs in Rotary, unfortunately, they don't include the internationality of of the organization itself. And one thing um, Rory has been stressing, as I said previously, is that portion of projects and being able to serve, um, being able to be a service organization itself. I think internationally is part of that one. 
Have you looked at the projects you do as far as serving the community or serving international component or you just kind of go with what somebody else suggests? Because you've been very successful as a president and it seems like you have very, I would say, non-influential as far as making decisions. You let the people make the decision. Well, I do want people to step forward and if they have something they're interested in, mm -hmm. I think we can all take it on. Mm -hmm. um, even a small project, um, like we have one of our members who was a band leader right. and he is passionate about music and the, that our local high school band continues with music every year. Mm -hmm. So why not support that? You know, like step behind something, even though it's a small project, mm -hmm. how can we support this and how can we make it fun? I guess that's one of my key components is how can you make something fun? Mm -hmm. No, that's good. That's the uh, Bands, Bands Forever project right. you guys do. That's a great one, uh, a lot of fun with that one. I noticed also that the community itself um, is very aware of the footprint of the club, the Rotary Club of Carpenter Morning specific, um, even though there's three total clubs in, in the city itself. So tell us how you create that awareness of what Rotary is doing in our community. Have you thought about that? Have I thought about it? Well, I. I do a lot of Facebook posting. We mm -hmm. do weekly uh, newspaper press releases. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I personally talk to pretty much everyone I talk <laughs> to, you know, it, running into, right. you know, about what I'm up to. And then I always extend an invitation if they want to come. Got it. Because there is nobody that's not okay for Rotary, you know. If they, <laughs> you <very> know, <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably why you're so successful at bringing people in. Um, this right now, uh, 50 members is the largest that this club has ever been. And I know you have uh, ambitions of growing it, and I don't see why it wouldn't continue to grow under your leadership and letting the club members do what they want. What do you think is going to be the biggest impact that you're going to have as a president this year? Have you thought about that? The biggest impact? Yeah, what are you, what are you going to look back on and say, that was kind of neat doing that part of it? Well, I really want to, um, I think the cohesiveness of the club is probably the most important for me, is that people in the room, regardless of where they're sitting, all feel connected in some way. Wow, that's, a, that's very profound. That's a good one. That's why you're so successful. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but okay. hopefully the uh, audience got a little bit of teaser of what a successful club is like and being people, new members. Uh, with that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Rotary is one outstanding organization. People like Clint Kim doing the leadership por portion of that one uh, will be doing a lot of good changes in the world and through Rotary. With that, we will see you next time.